nitration is a method that chemists use to determine the concentration of one solution by using a solution of known concentration. We call that known concentration the standard. Now the standard always goes in the volumetric burette, this device right here. Uh, that's so that we can keep very, very careful track of how much volume we actually dispense into uh, what's being titrated down here in the Erlenmeyer flask. Because remember, volume times molarity equals moles. That means that if I know the volume of my titrant and I know the concentration of my titrant in molarity, I can multiply the volume times the molarity and that will give me the moles of my titrant. So I'll know exactly how many I added into my solution. Now keep in mind you always have to put an indicator in your solution as well so that you can get a color change when you reach the end point of the titration. Remember the end point is a color change. Now the first thing that you need in every titration is a balanced chemical reaction. In this case I'll be titrating uh, acetic acid with sodium hydroxide. And acetic acid is, C is HC2H3O2 and then I'm going to add to it my titrant sodium hydroxide. And that's going to produce two products. It, our salt that it produces will be sodium acetate, NaC2H3O2. And of course, since this is an acid base neutralization reaction, our other product will be water. And water, as you recall, is going to be the driving force for this reaction. It's the formation of a non electrolyte. We'll go ahead and balance the reaction. I'll do a little simplified method. I have one acetate ion on the reactant side. I have one acetate ion on the product side. I've got one sodium on the reactant side, one sodium on the product side. One hydrogen plus one hydrogen is two hydrogens on the reactant side, two hydrogens on the product side. And I have one oxygen on the product side and one oxygen on the reactant side. So I'm balanced and my coefficients of both the acetic acid and the sodium hydroxide are one to one. Now in this particular problem I'm not looking for an unknown concentration. I actually have the concentration of both of my uh, both of my reactants. I've got a 0.2 molar uh, concentration of acetic acid and a 0.075 molar concentration of sodium hydroxide. In this reaction I'm actually asking the question how many milliliters of acetic acid and I'm going to use a generic representation for an acid. I'm just going to call it HA. The A in this case stands for acetate. The hydrogen stands for the acid. It's simply uh, easier to do that than to continue to write acetate over and over again, particularly with this setup that I have here with this mouse pad. It's kind of difficult, as you can see, to write. Although my handwriting isn't much better on the best of days and the best of circumstances. So I'm looking for X milliliters of acetic acid. That's uh, are required to completely neutralize 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. So most people ask what goes on the other side of the equal sign once you've established your X factor. Well what goes on the other side of the equal signs is the other stuff. And what we have of the other stuff is the volume. It's, never, it's not going to be the molarity. It's going to be the volume. But what we want to do is we ultimately want to multiply the volume times the molarity. Kind of squeeze myself in here. There are 1,000 milliliters for every one liter. And I want to go ahead and convert milliliters, 50 milliliters, to liters so that I can multiply the volume times the molarity, which is moles per liter, and wind up with uh, moles. 
So in every one liter of the sodium hydroxide, what they're telling me is I have 0 0.0875 moles. That is how much NaOH I have per liter. That is my molarity. Now, a common mistake that students make is they'll put a capital M up there. What you need to realize is that this is the capital M, moles over liters. My next conversion factor is going to be to relate or convert the moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of acetic acid. So this is going to be my acetic acid up here, and this is my sodium hydroxide that's down here. Now, I go to the balanced chemical reaction for my mole-to-mole -mole ratio, which is 1 to 1. All right, so now I have, I've converted milliliters of sodium hydroxide to liters of sodium hydroxide. I've converted liters of sodium hydroxide to moles of sodium hydroxide. I used the mole-to-mole -mole ratio between a sodium hydroxide and acetic acid to convert from moles of sodium hydroxide to moles of acetic acid. What remains is to get from moles of acetic acid to milliliters or a unit of volume of acetic acid. So what's going to go down here is moles of acetic acid and up here one liter of acetic acid. And I go to my balanced chemical reaction, uh, sorry, I go to my problem to get that uh, moles to liter ratio and here it is, 0 0.2 molar acetic acid. So there's 0 0.2 0, 0, sorry if that's hard to read, 0 0.200 moles of acetic acid per one liter. My last conversion factor is going to be to convert one liter of acetic acid to milliliters of acetic acid. So that will be my final conversion and then I'll get my answer once I plug all of that into the calculator. So moles of acetic acid over moles of acetic acid cancel, liters over liters cancel, and I wind up with milliliters. So I'll go ahead and I'll do my calculation in my calculator, which says that 50 times 1 divided by 1,000. Now, I just thought about this, and perhaps you'll agree with me that since there's a thousand in the numerator on this end and a thousand in the denominator on this end that perhaps I can avoid putting that in the calculator and I think that's exactly what I'll do. So that's a, just going to be 50 times 0 0.0875 times 1 divided by 1 times 1 divided by 0.2 and that should give me my answer, and indeed it gives me 21.9 milliliters. So I have 21.9 milliliters, milliliters of acetic acid are required to completely neutralize 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. Now, I personally think that that is the long way to do the problem. There is an easier way using a modification of the dilution formula, which says that the molarity of the sodium hydroxide times the volume of the sodium hydroxide is equal to the molarity of the acetic acid, which I'll still call HA, times the volume of the acetic acid. And in this particular case, uh, the mole-to-mole -mole ratio is one to one, so for every one mole of sodium hydroxide, I add to the acetic acid one mole of 
the acetic acid gets neutralized. So I can simply solve for volume of acetic acid by dividing both sides by the molarity of the acetic acid. And there you go. So if I go ahead and I do that, I think that you can see that the math is actually going to wind up being exactly the same. So for the molarity of the sodium hydroxide, we have 0 0.875 molar times the volume, which is 50 milliliters, divided by the uh, molarity of the acetic acid, 0 0.200 molar, and when we work that out, we get exactly the same answer, 21.9 milliliters of sodium, I'm sorry, of acetic acid required to completely neutralize the 50 milliliters of sodium hydroxide. And if you look at it, we have 50 in the numerator, 0.0875 in the numerator. In our other method, we had 50 in the numerator, 0.0875 in the numerator, and we have in our second method 0.2 molar in the denominator and 0.2 molar in the denominator in the initial method that we used. So those are two ways to do titration problems when you have a one-to-one mole-to-mole.